Welcome back, everybody. 12s everywhere, still recovering from Saturday's wild card showdown in Dallas, where the Cowboys eked out a two point win. The game looked like it might be one of those trademark comebacks by the Seahawks, but just wasn't quite enough. Terry Holloman, former UW running back and co host of the Barbershop, joins me now to wrap up the season. That seemed like that happened in a big hurry. It really it quick. Bam, like, bam, we bam, bam, thank you, man, we're out of there. But, you know, I think we have to, as fans, as 12s, I mean, be happy where we're at with this team. You know, we're expected to win four games by the experts, according to them, at the beginning of the season, and to finish at a wild card position, yep. an opportunity to win and go on into the playoffs. I think we got to be happy. Uh, I think that's a good long-term attitude. I'm uh, trying to be positive <laughs> on the day after, Margaret, please. I'm trying to convince myself. Yeah, me too. My, but my short-term frustration was just, um, and this is just a layperson. Obviously, I've not played football. I don't know. I just felt like, could we have opened that game up just a little bit more to the passing game a little bit sooner? I think probably we could have, and I think most people today will say that as well. Um, but sometimes you have to, the old saying goes, dance with the person that brought mm -hmm. you to the dance. And mm -hmm. the Seahawks have been very good at running the ball all season. They were number one in the NFL with 160 yards rushing per game, so they figured they would stick with the run first. And when the pass did work, they did not seem to switch out of that thing, and they just right. stuck with it. Well, I understand that part, doing it, and you never know just because something didn't work in the first half doesn't mean it might not go better in the second half, but what were the Cowboys doing to be so effective against the run with us? They were just really quick. They were quicker off the ball. Uh, the Seahawks just seemed like the, the offensive line was not ready, and believe it or not, the Seahawks had one of the best offensive lines in the country, one of the most ferocious, one of the most physical, one of the most dominating run offensive lines in the National Football League. Unfortunately for them, they were coming off some serious injuries. Uh, DJ Fluker was coming off a bad hamstring injury right. from the previous week. J.R. Uh, Sweezy JR, still has a broken foot. He was playing with he a broken foot. played with a broken foot. And I promise you, if I had a broken foot right now, uh -oh. I probably would have called you and said, <laughs> Mark, I can't make it to sit on your couch today because my foot is broken. And it but, hurts. And it hurts. But he played an entire game. So you kudos to him for doing that. Um, I don't know if that's smart or not smart, but it, it happened. Let's put it that way. The weirdest thing was the Sebastian Janikowski injury. Yeah. He was trying a, what, a 57-yard field goal and then just collapsed right. when he put that foot down. And what do you... I, I kept he, wondering uh, the whole time, so what happens now if we need to kick a field goal? Yeah, obviously it, he was out of the game and it, it didn't help us the, knowing that he was gone, we couldn't use and we had to use uh, our punter to do some kicks after that, but you know, there's something about being a 40-year-old guy still playing football. <laughs> 41. In the national, 41 years old, still playing football in the National yeah. Football League. Sometimes you try to make those plays that you used to make when you were 21, 22 years old, your body doesn't quite perform and react the same way as it used and to. And frankly, don't we we all know how that feels. Oh, yeah. Like I, said, I, couldn't something. Get, yeah. I almost couldn't get out of bed this morning <laughs> based on, with my hamstring, and I just I sat on the couch all day yesterday. So maybe the most frustrating play for me was the Dak Prescott run that was at a draw play. He right. gets, you know, he converts a third down, gets down to the, the goal line, and had they kicked a field goal there, I think we probably would have won that game. I think so. So what happened? Uh, obviously, I think they got into a defense that they didn't want to be in. Uh, they were in a situation where it was third and 14. The Seahawks are usually normally very good at getting off the field in a situation yeah. like that, but Dax Prescott, he's a good guy. He's a good player. Uh, he just made an awesome play. Uh, Bobby Wagner was in a position to make a tackle. I think one of their players, their tight end, actually he may have blocked him a little bit in the back, but uh, unfortunately for the Seahawks, uh, the Dallas the Cowboys converted, yeah. All right, well, let's talk about the good things. I think we both think Tyler Lockett was player of the game. Absolutely. The guy had one of his best games, if not the season for sure, uh, then uh, of his career. Four catches, 120 yards, 30 yards wow. per catch, and just some of the most amazing uh, catches. He, he didn't even need two hands sometimes. One hand was good enough for Tyler. He's been amazing. What and They had that choice between him and Paul Richardson, and I think they chose wisely. They made a good choice. P. Rich was also a very yeah, good player, but Tyler too, Lockett but. has been something special. The other thing that seems really special is just the way these guys are talking about each other reminds me a lot of the, the season before the Super Bowl win, mm -hmm. when there was just something special about the chemistry. Am I just making this no, up? Or no, I think you're <laughs> am right. Am I hearing I, it right? No, I think you're absolutely right. And I think it really stems from the top down to the bottom, from uh, Pete Carroll, John Snyder, all the way down through everybody in that locker room, throughout everybody in the entire facility. I think it's just something that they breed and they preach. And you can see it uh, with the young players. Now they're starting to develop it. They yeah, believe the in each other. They've completely bought in. They know that, you know, when we have a guy like Russell Wilson at the quarterback, the game is never over. And we always have an opportunity to win. They always talk about defending every blade of grass. 
class. And so you see that in these guys. There's no quit in, in anybody in that locker right. room. Okay, so let's talk about who might not be here. Um, it, we don't know what's going to happen with DJ Fluker, right? right? He's a free agent. Um, Russell is up for a new contract fairly soon. Yeah, they have another year. Will they will they deal with him now, or will he have to play that final year? What happens? They might talk to him about the situation. Um, it's you know when you got a quarterback, a franchise quarterback like Russell Wilson, you don't want to wait until it's actually their contract year. You want to get that done and settled and buttoned up before they get into that final season. Um, but they other have some other guys on that team that need uh, some money as Let's well. Let's talk about that. Frank Clark is probably the number one guy. I would think on that defense that they need to take care of. He's had the best year of his career, 14 sacks. Uh, he's a guy whose motor never stops. He's a, a big voice, a big presence yeah. in the locker room. They want to have him back on the squad. And Carol has said he's not going anywhere, so right. they're obviously committed to taking care of him. Should they draft an offensive lineman? Um, I think they have the guys on the offensive line right now. If you saw what they were able to do this year. What if we lose Fluker, though? If we lose Fluker, then they probably got to get somebody to replace him. And it's tough to replace a guy like him. To me, he has been the heart and soul of this offensive line. He's a tough guy, a mean guy. You got to have some of those guys yep. on your offensive line. And he's mammoth. Mammoth. He's just mammoth. He's the guy. And uh, uh, if we lose him, I think you're going to have to find somebody to replace him for okay, sure. That's what I'm going to root for if he goes, but I hope he stays. And just we'll just very quickly touch on the on the Huskies. Can I just say one thing about that? People who've been mean about Jake Browning should stop it. They absolutely should. If you think about where this program was before Jake Browning got here, uh, to say we were rebuilding would be, you know, on the, you know, general That would be side. hilarious. Actually, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He, this guy's gone four years. He's brought this team to three major bowl games, a, a Fiesta Bowl, a Peach Bowl, and a Rose Bowl. Two Pac-12 championships out of three years. The guy owns virtually every single record in the Pac-12, not just at UW. So lay off of Jake a little bit. Plus, they're student athletes. Yeah, man, relax. Have they're, a Moscow mule. Exactly. And so we wish him and Miles Gaskin and the whole team the best. Absolutely.